Yeah. Oh, like yeah. Really no, we have we have one more. Why don't they just? We could move on to yes. real quick. Yes. Uh, this one's a little bit more engineering related. So why don't they use a skyhook system to get far in the solar system and get places faster? So Someone Ben, explain to me what that is. I don't even know what it is. No, Ben, just give us like your opinion Bond on movie. the beanstalk <laughs> space elevator. Do, do, do you want me to like think of what a skyhook is first? Yes, that's what and I then... want. Yeah, for this one, I do want that. I want you to explain <laughs> why they don't use it without knowing what it is. Uh, I'm imagining okay, sky system to get far in the solar system. So I mean, we're talking, yeah, we're talking deep. Then I mean. Yeah, so far I would consider like Neptune far. So, um, yeah, is this going to be like a slingshot in space? Oh, I guess. But if it's sky, that means it would be on Earth. Otherwise, you no longer have sky. Isn't that what Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's signature move was? <laughs> that's the sky right. hook. <laughs> the sky it? hook. That is right. <laughs> I believe that's right. Um, I am old. <laughs> I know who he <laughs> that is. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why don't they use a skyhook? This sounds a lot like all of the why don't they just we've had where why don't they just uh, take a hyperloop and shoot it off a mountain and then launch the rocket? And in the end, Tim tells us that it's just easier to launch it from a launch pad. I don't know. That's my guess is that this is like completely inefficient and way over engineered for something we could <laughs> probably do in another like more direct way like better you know like a, a raptor engine instead of a merlin engine or something like that there's my guess and Joe. and a valid description of a skyhook for anyone wondering. Well, i'll tell you what a skyhook is from where i was young it was when you know you're working at a an engineering company and you had a new kid come in you would send them off next door to ask for skyhooks and they would you know send them out back and send them on a wild goose chase because they don't exist <laughs> <laughs> it was a prank thing but skyhook is also a name given to a space elevator yeah, and a type huh. of space elevator where the it you can basically like it'll it'll snatch things up that are suborbital, and and cl and grab onto them and be able to basically do it a sen uh, in a sense for free or very low propellant margin because it yeah there are many different kinds. There's one which is like hundreds of miles long and it kind of rotates around the Earth and dips in, and because of the way it's spinning, they can just hook something on and it spins it up into space. That's one idea. There's another one where you've got a tower that is basically vertical, like going between like a thousand kilometers and maybe 200 kilometers. And because it, you have a sort of ion thruster in the middle, but because the bottom is closer in, it's actually moving slower. So you can launch your spacecraft to catch up to it and they, they can save a few hundred meters per second of, of delta V. Um, Got it. Okay, so it's something that's living in space that's reaching back into the atmosphere. There are many different I mean, definitions of the term the reason why yeah these haven't been used is first of all a lot of engineering to make it happen uh, if you're talking about beanstalks or space elevators then you need material strengths which still aren't quite there right if you're going to make things that are hundreds of kilometers long made of perfect dislocation free carbon nanotubes we haven't been able to make them that long, never mind, you know, we, we can't make them inches long, never mind hundreds of miles long. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I saw that movie Ad Astra, they had one, so I mean, clearly it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> the Ad Astra had a lot of badness. Yeah, it, was a, it was a <laughs> dumb was... person's idea of what a smart space movie was. Even for me, even for me, as a dumb person, How I was like I seen appalled this movie by it. Don't don't waste your time. I, the, the annoying <laughs> I mean, thing about it, these it movies, gets referenced so much. Yeah, though. They, yeah. if they just like come and ask me, you know, hey, <laughs> hey, we've got these great ideas. I'm like these are good ideas. If you make these changes, then your movie won't be dumb. It'll be well, boring, there's always... but it'll not at least be physically <laughs> consistent with reality. There's always a lot of du like weird little things. Like we were watching, my wife and I were watching a movie uh, the other day, and Chris Pratt's in space, and it's on this thing, and whatever. And, Yes, and there's mm. all these things. The thing that got me is he's like out in space in this, uh, you know, in a suit, and he and he has a tear, and the tear falls down his face. Uh. I'm like, <laughs> no, that's not what happens to a tear. <laughs> like that wasn't there was some astronaut was he replacing fixing the Look Hubble at or something? Yep, oh, yeah, yeah, and he like famously had something his his eye watered up and he like couldn't. Oh no, see. that's Chris Hadfield. Yeah, yeah. Look at Luca 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 Luca
fluid just sort of stuck to his face. He had a leak. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Oh, like, God. But Chris so, has so, got the... You know, oh, yeah. a new phobia. Oh, yeah. Drowning in <laughs> space suit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. From your own fluid. Su- suggest uh, yes. you watch uh, Radiohead. No surprises. That's a great video. Oh, mm. interesting. Wait, what is it? I think No Surprises. Oh, Radiohead. Yeah. Yeah, you cut out. Yeah, I know. Yeah, because it fills up yeah. slowly. I know One exactly take. what you're talking about. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Wow. Um, and I'll go ahead and add to the Skyhook thing real quick. Is is like It's just one of those things practically it's like in order to make something like that feasible you have to have a huge infrastructure a huge vehicle in space you have to have i mean it's just one of those things like eventually someday we might have stuff like that if if the feasibility looks like hey you know we could actually pay this off after x you know x amount of mass going towards mars or something sure maybe a skyhook might be you know feasible or or economically viable but for any time in the near future, just to get a sky hook or something like that going and working and the material science like Scott was talking about. Yeah, we're, we're just not we're just not there yet. We're talking pretty far future stuff. Uh, j- I mean, if we don't kill each other first. Yeah. You know. yeah. So just consider this. If you have a tower that goes to like a, an orbital tower or a space elevator that goes to geostationary orbit. Right. And imagine mm-hmm. you put an elevator on the side of it. What's the fastest elevator you've ever been on? Oh, maybe a mile. You know, an like hour? maybe they go like know, 10, 15 mile miles an hour. an hour. Right. Uh, yeah, no idea. Okay, can you imagine crossing thirty six thousand miles or kilometers on a, a, an average <laughs> elevator? These—it's not just an elevator. This is like a train ride that's mm-hmm. going faster than any train you've ever been on, and it's going vertical, right? Yeah. There's a lot of engineering problems to solve, even if you can build a structure like that. And of course, I'm I'm very much about pointing out the flaws and problems in these schemes and being totally amazed when people solve them because i expect well, people to solve them that's right. the thing right if you're uh, so my philosophy in business in a lot of ways has always been like come up with a crazy idea and have smart people tell me why it's not going to work and if i can fix all the things that, the reasons that they tell me it's not going to work it's going to work so i think like you're doing a service yes, by I doing that right by saying hey <laughs> don't do this don't do this don't do or this isn't going to work this isn't going to work this isn't going to work it's like cool now we have a roadmap of how to fix those things and if they're insurmountable, then we shouldn't do it, you know? Right. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.